Well, Americans are fed up with COVID and focused more on fixing inflation in the new year, even though Nancy Pelosi and other Democrat lawmakers are doing just the opposite, it seems. This according to a new poll showing a 16-point drop from last year in the percentage of Americans who want the government to prioritize COVID-19 right now. What Americans really want is for the government to work on problems like the economy and inflation. Joining me now to discuss is Mick Mulvaney, his former chief of staff and OMB director to former President Donald Trump. I think you had both jobs at the same time for a while there, didn't you, Mick? I had a couple of them, yeah, David. It's great to be here. Happy New Year. Thanks Happy New me. Year to you. You know, your old colleague, a uh, very smart guy, Kevin Hassett, was on with uh, Kudlow about a week ago. He said that the inflation number is probably pretty close to 10 percent. That is double digit right now. Do you agree with him? I do. I guess it depends on how you want to count it. Are you going to include energy? Are you going to include food? Keep in mind, most of the time, the economists get rid of those numbers because they tend to swing up and down faster than other goods. But what you and I pay for and what everybody else pay for obviously includes food and gasoline and those types of things. So I think Kevin was trying to get yeah. to what average Americans, what real people are, are feeling in their pocketbooks as opposed to just the reports that you might see on TV out of D.C. And, you know, inflation does take on a momentum of its own. Uh, people's expectations grow. The, they see their neighbor getting a, a, a raise in wage. They want to raise. I mean, there are all these factors that give it a momentum. I'm, I'm wondering, do you see anything that the Biden administration is doing to stop the momentum of inflation? You know, in fact, it's the exact opposite. What I see is them actually making it worse. Keep in mind, um, we've spent about, I think, that last count, roughly six trillion extra dollars during the Biden administration on things like uh, COVID stimulus. It takes a long time, David, for all of that money to move out into the system. So we haven't even seen the full inflationary impacts of all of this money that the Democrats in Washington have been dumping into the system. And on the other end of that, you see the Biden administration saying they helped by releasing gas, uh, oil from the National Reserves. They say they helped by trying to help the port in, 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 in Long Beach, California. Those don't really solve the problems. Those are very small, superficial types of things. Yeah. What the Biden administration continues to do is re-regulate the economy, undo some of the good things that the Trump administration had done that would make it easier to bring goods and services to market. So you put all those things together. No, I, I'm not optimistic about inflation for the next year or so. I think it could get worse before it gets better. Well, and of course, they they don't blame themselves. No politician does for the rise in, for the bad things that happen, the rise in inflation at this point. They're blaming producers for the rise in prices. They're blaming oil companies uh, for price gouging. They're blaming uh, uh, poultry producers, meat producers. And they're, as you suggest, they're increasing regulations. Now, when a company has increased regulations, that's like a tax. It increases their price of production, and they all Always pass that on to consumers, so, so that will only make inflation worse, won't it? It's not only a tax; it's an impediment. Think of it as, as making the the tube, the, the the tunnel, from the supplier to your shelves smaller. It's harder for for producers to get things to market so that you can buy them. And again, come back to the basic definition of inflation too much money chasing too few goods. Your expectation point is a good one. You might see your neighbor getting a raise. That that might influence your expectation of inflation in the future. But more likely, you might go to the grocery store and see an empty shelf and think, oh my goodness, I have to buy whatever is here at whatever price it is so that I can get some right. so I don't run out. That's the type of expectation on the supply side that can create yeah. inflationary forces. No, the extremes the are in communist countries. We've, against us right now. we've seen that happen in places like Venezuela, all the old... Soviet Union had that the empty shelf. Whenever you see a line, you jump in it. You didn't care what the line was for, but you figured it was something that you'd eventually need anyway. I, I, quickly, as OMB, former OMB director, it must kill you to see all these trillions being spent. We spent already $5.4 trillion on all the COVID plans, uh, most of which have nothing to do with actual COVID relief. And we don't know where that money's going. I mean, there, there's supposedly $100 billion that went missing in the, in the PPP program that started in the Trump administration, but also $79 billion went for COVID tests. Now, obviously, that money was not well spent because we don't have the tests. Is anybody tracking the money? No, it's really, really difficult to, to do so. These the, these dollar amounts are so large, David. If they, again, I'm not into language control, but if I could wave a magic wand, I would get rid of the word 
trillion dollars. A trillion dollars is such an obscenely large amount of money. A billion dollars is just an outrageously large sum of money. And it's very difficult for any organization, the Office of Management Budget is charged with doing this, of keeping track of money at that level. And there's always going to be waste and theft and fraud in the system. And when you multiply it by billions and trillions of dollars, it's going to get even worse. Do I pull my hair out? Absolutely. Do I think of all we could have done in this country with all of this money that we've been throwing at COVID or throwing at goodness gracious knows what? Uh, I remember, I think we spent $35 billion on testing as part of a trillion dollar COVID bill. That's a small fraction uh, of the entire bill that we passed uh, about a year ago. Um, I guess if there's a silver lining, it's that the rest of the public, you mentioned that polling data on the front end of this piece, the, 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 the general public feels the same right. way. They don't care as much about COVID right now as they do about the economy. And that bodes well for the Republicans going to And they to seem convention. to understand that spending trillions of dollars more will just increase inflation, not decrease it, as the, as the president claims. And, and could make it worse. And folks are going to, the Democrats are telling folks, don't worry, we fixed it. We could fix COVID. They haven't. Yeah. We can fix inflation. They haven't. And I think what they do is they overpromise and underdeliver. And you're seeing that in some of the, the early polling data that, we, that, yeah. uh, that just came out this week, that the issues right now that voters care about are the issues that Republicans do well on. Democrats did not like this polling data to see voters care more about the economy and more about immigration and less about COVID. I think the lowest thing that polled was racial equity. These are things that have got the Democrats shaking in their boots. I think it bodes well for the midterm election. It's a mm. shame that we have to put the country through this to get yeah. to that point. But I do believe that ultimately uh, voters do the right things. Mick Mulvaney, good to see you, Mick. Thank you very much for coming in. Appreciate it.